when you're dealing with a narcissistic dysfunctional family system, the children are there to meet the parents' needs instead of the other way around. And this is why it is dysfunctional. So because of this, to maintain the dysfunctional equilibrium, you will see where different members are assigned roles. And these roles may vary with time. So oftentimes you'll have, of course, the narcissist. Then you'll have the enabler, people-pleasing, codependent parent that enables the narcissist's inappropriate behavior. And then when it comes to the children, you normally have the golden child, the surrogate parent, the scapegoat, and the lost child, for example. And oftentimes you will see we're recovering codependent empaths or the scapegoat or the lost child in their dysfunctional family system. And because we internalize often, then we internalize the scapegoat role, which essentially is a role where you feel like your parents' problems are your own. So you internalize that as shame of feeling unworthy, of feeling unworthy of being loved, right? Because you're the scapegoat or you're the lost child. You're pushed out off to the side. You're out on the last ring in the dysfunctional family system. Because again, the entire system is dysfunctional because the children are there to meet the parents' needs instead of the other way around. So today's video was inspired by a comment left here on the channel. So we're going to be delving into, so Polo Man writes that conventional wisdom tells us that parents want their children to soar. A materialistic narc mother only belittles and devalues her children, but also doesn't want them to succeed and stay below her so that she can stay at the top of the pecking order. And that really is it right there. When it comes to narcissistic parents, they do not have the ability to love their children. Because simply put, they really do not have access to love. So oftentimes on the channel, you will see me use the Hawking Scale or the Map of Consciousness by Dr. David R. Hawkins to kind of give you a better frame of reference to what this actually looks like. So you'll hear me state often that pathological narcissists are people that are rooted in their shame and they're unable to move past their pride. So when we're looking at the Hawking scale or the map of consciousness, understand that we are all here to expand. We're all here to reach what you may call enlightenment or self-actualization if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So again, we're here to grow and we have to meet the lower needs before we get to the higher needs, all right? So it's kind of like climbing a ladder. And this is also similar to the chakra system where you kind of have to work on your lower chakras, get those balanced to move up, all right? To eventually get your crown chakra activated and your third eye open and so on. So the Hawking scale is similar because at our core, we are consciousness. So we are spirit at our core and we are energy and we're here to expand. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So we are spirit, or if you want to say source, source energy, life, life force, prana, chi, the observer, the watcher, etc. Governing a physical body with access to tools or faculties, namely our mind power, our willpower, and our emotions. So as we grow, we expand. And this is happening, of course, over time. So healing is a journey, and so is your spiritual evolution. So it's a process. So we should be growing and working on being more enlightened, on being more spiritually aware. When it comes to pathological narcissism, we're talking about a type of arrested development. And it is an arrested development at the psycho-spiritual level. So the psyche would be a similar equivalent to what you would call the personality 
or what you may hear me refer to as the soul. It is made up of your mind power, your willpower, and your emotions. So when clinicians say that narcissism, when someone is deep into this spectrum, when it is maladaptive, when it is pathological, right? It is narcissistic personality disorder. And when you take a look in the DSM, and the DSM is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Illnesses, you will see where for the NPD diagnostic itself, if someone were to be diagnosed with this by a clinician, psychiatrist, psychotherapist, etc., they would have to have five or more of the nine characteristics that you see listed. However, anyone that you encounter with one or even two of those characteristics is going to be a highly disordered individual. Because you're dealing with people that are grandiose, so again, they're based in their ego, but they're disconnected from their spirit. So they're grandiose and superior, so they believe that they are better than you. They require excessive amounts of attention and admiration because, again, you have to feed the ego. And finally, they're empathy impaired, so they do not have access to empathy to give to you. And they don't. They're based in shame, and they can't move past their pride. Empathy is linked to love and kindness and so on. And those emotions or those vibrations, that energy spectrum is in the 500s. And again, pathological narcissists are rooted in their shame and they cannot move past their pride. So they're stuck at the bottom end of the scale. So what means then is that these individuals have not ascended. They're stuck in the third dimension. So they're based in shame, which means that every day they wake up, they're in shame. And then at best, they get to the level of pride and pride cometh before the fall. So they fall right back down to shame because it is a cycle. It is a shame pride cycle. The narcissistic abuse cycle starts off with shame. It is a shame-based disorder. And understand that when we're talking about shame here, we're talking about pathologically low self-esteem. So understand that their behavior has nothing to do with you. They really are running from this shame and they will do anything. And this includes, for example, narcissistic parents belittling their children. So understand that in the third dimension, this is victim abuser consciousness. So somebody has to be up and somebody has to be down. This is because depending on the level of consciousness that we operate at, this is also linked to our emotional processing and our mental processing. For example, when you're in a state of anger, well, you think angry thoughts, right? Anger, the emotion, is also linked to thoughts in the mind because the mind generates thoughts. You use your mind to generate ideas and understand that the mind is not the brain. The brain is a physical organ that is a part of the body. The mind is not physical. You cannot touch the mind. Your mind is a tool that you use to make decisions. You use your mind to generate ideas and so on. So when you're in a state of anger, you think angry thoughts. When you're in a state of love, then you think loving thoughts. So pathological narcissists are rooted in their shame and they cannot move past their pride. So that really is all that she wrote. So if you think about any other negative emotions, then they're going to be between shame and pride. That is where they would fall on the Hawking scale because the further up you go, the better you feel because the more positive you are, the more you are expanding. So what you're looking at really is someone that is stuck in a contracted state. They're very tense, very anxious filled with rage, filled with anger, because that is what they have access to. They do not have access to empathy. Again, empathy is out there in the 500s, and pathological narcissism as an energy spectrum exists below the line of courage. That is below the line of 200. So they do not have access to courage, and this makes them then stuck in a state of cowardice. So you really are dealing with adult bullies. Bullies are abusers. Pathological narcissists exist in victim abuser consciousness. So if you're dealing with a narcissist that is a parent, then they're going to be abusive. Again, a pathological narcissist with the pattern behavior of narcissism. Again, they're grandiose. 
excessive need for attention. Their empathy impairs, so they really do not care too much about anybody else but them and their self-image. And also they're pathological liars. Those are the four main characteristics that you can use to identify a pathological narcissist because it is patterned behavior. It's not just, oh, one day they had a bad day and they act like that. This is the pattern behavior because it is a pathology. And pathology is the study of disease. It is patterned, dysfunctional, or disordered behavior. It is a psychopathology. So a disorder related to the mind power, the willpower, and the emotion, right? Because it is a personality disorder. Or you may hear me refer to this as them being lost souls or dark souls. And this is because at the core of pathological narcissism people is that these individuals abandoned their spirits in childhood. They abandoned their true selves for a false self. So the ego needs a boost. The ego is a false self. And this is why most likely if you're listening to this audio or watching this video, then you most likely had an ego death or a spiritual awakening. Or you may hear this also being referred to as the dark night of the soul. Where your ego kind of disintegrated to a degree and then that energy got diverted to the spirit. And he had a spiritual awakening. We had to rebalance and recalibrate and get your mind right because it felt like you were losing yourself. Well, technically you were, you're losing a part of yourself and it's a false self. It was that ego. It was that scapegoat identity when you woke up from that, when you had that spiritual awakening. So you got reconnected to yourself at a much deeper level. And that is what the spiritual awakening is or what the dark night of the soul is. This is what enlightenment is. It is growing in your awareness. When it comes to pathological narcissists, they believe that they are the ego. They believe that they are the false self. So they don't want to take off the mask. So understand that you're not dealing with people with a true underlying personality. They did not develop one. They developed a false self. They actually developed multiple false selves. Because if the narcissist comes around me, and I like hip-hop music, then they like hip-hop music. If they go around you and you like jazz music, then the narcissist likes jazz music. They do not have a true underlying personality. What they do is they pick up bits and pieces of other people's personality and pretend that it is their own. So they will read a character in a book or watch someone in a movie or in a TV show, and then you'll see where they start to act like them. And they may also steal your personality. So whether it's a narcissistic parent, they're going to want you beneath them. You're supposed to be their little minion. This is how it is in victim abuser consciousness. Based in shame, cannot move past their pride. Nothing else exists. So they are going to belittle you and devalue you. This is all a part of the narcissistic abuse cycle. So that parental figure could treat you kindly like a golden child, but it's really love bombing. And then eventually you'll see where they switch up on you. And that is where the devalue and the discard. And again, the cycle goes around and around. It is dysfunctional. So if you have a narcissistic parent and for example, when you were younger, maybe you're good in sports, good in the academics, etc. Maybe you got good grades, then they will feed off that supply that they're getting through you. But it's not so much that they care about you yourself. They care about the narcissistic supply, the attention, admiration, validation, and attention that they get from other people through you. Because you're the conduit, you are the vessel. It is you that is getting the good grades, but they believe that is their self-esteem, but it's technically other esteem, right? So understand that pathological narcissists don't really have a self, right? They have a abandoned self. So they don't really have a self. They have a false self. So this false self needs supply. The ego needs supply. The ego is not meant to be a true self. 
So because they do not have a true self, they cannot self-reflect. So they cannot boost their own energy. They lost their source. They abandoned their spirit. They abandoned their self. They dissociated. So because they're caught up in their ego or caught up in the false self, so they have to get other esteem. They have to get the esteem from other people. They have to feed on an external source. So I really do hope that you're understanding why these individuals have to plug into you. They have to plug into you because you are their new source of supply. Again, we're spirit or source, source energy, governing a physical body with access to tools. Narcissists don't really have a source anymore. So they are like really dim, right? Think about when your phone is on like 5%, when that little red line comes up. Because your phone is almost out of power, right? So the narcissist is a black hole. They are like 5%, you know, some of them could be at 1%. Some of them are like blinking, you know, down at that 1%, 5% range on your phone. But then you come in at 90 and 95% because you still have a connection to your spirit. They did not break you. Your dysfunctional family system did not break you. If you are in a dysfunctional intimate relationship, that also did not break you. And that is what these individuals really were trying to do. They were trying to break you down. They were trying to break you at your core. And they were trying to do this because this is essentially what happened to them. And this is because pathological and narcissist people are the tree that snapped in the wind. And they snapped and lost their minds lost control of their emotions. Again, they're based in shame and they cannot move past their pride. And they also are very impulsive and compulsive because they lack accurate, applicable willpower. They have not developed their will. And again, they dissociated from their true selves in childhood. So they snapped. They snapped and lost their minds. So they really are wondering, how is it that you did not snap? with all the traps that they set. Again, whether it's an intimate relationship or even a parental relationship, they're wondering how is it that you did not break? How is it that you do not look like the abuse that you went through? Because in their mind, they believe that when they put you down, it raises their self-esteem, but it doesn't do that. What is actually happening behind the scenes is that they're going through a shame pride cycle. And pride here is dysfunctional pride where they do not believe that anything is wrong with their behavior. Again, they're grandiose and superior. They believe that they are better than you. So pride comes before the fall and they fall right back down to shame. Because they're not really working on their true self, they're working on their false self. And when you question them, they have a narcissistic injury because they don't want to take off the mask. So they don't grow because they're perfect. And this is what you will see in relationships with narcissistic parents, narcissistic intimate partners, and so on. They have to devalue you. And I do mean they have to. It is pathological. It is a cycle. It is a cycle. It is pathological. Oftentimes people will ask questions like, how do you identify a narcissist? If you know what to look for, you will see it because it is pathological. People, once you have this awareness, you can never lose it. What will happen is you will see more and more narcissistic tendencies and you know, you'll be better able to see the people that are so deep rooted in their narcissism. They are like so deep in their ego. Again, these individuals don't even exist. Because it's just a mask that is talking to you, not spirit. And I did a previous video or two previous videos, actually part one and part two. And I'll link them here. We are mentioned that earth is 85% dark. Every single person isn't on an ascension journey. Some people are stuck in the third dimension. And there are more people that are at the bottom of the Hawking scale than are at the top. It is crowded at the bottom in victim abuser consciousness, in the first dimension, the second dimension, in the third dimension. That is where you're coming from if you got out of narcissistic abuse. 
because most of us were born into narcissistic dysfunctional family systems. Most of us were the scapegoat and or the lost child and we ended up with codependent tendencies or people pleasing tendencies which is what we're working on which is essentially building boundaries. Learning how to build boundaries, implementing them which also comes along with self-love because if you love yourself you will protect yourself. But this behavior again comes from the dysfunctional family system. This is where you learned this from. So now it's time to unlearn that and then relearn appropriate techniques to navigate life. So it is pathological that narcissists must devalue you. It is a cycle. After 1 p.m. it's 2 p.m. After 2 p.m. it's 3 p.m. Clockwork. It is a cycle. They have to devalue you. It is idealization or love bomb. They're going to flatter you. Devalue, discard, and hoover. It's a cycle. It's a pattern. And it is pattern behavior that you must know how to identify. So this is how you avoid them. They're filled with pride, so they don't believe that anything is wrong with their behavior. So you can't hold them accountable. Because they really are adult toddlers, you know. You can't hold them accountable. How could you? They have not developed to the level of rational thinking. The fourth dimension, the green area on the Hawking scale, the green area or higher. They do not have access to rational thinking. So they are going to be irrational or illogical. And you won't be able to hold them accountable because you need courage enough to be vulnerable, enough to be accountable. So you avoid people that are stuck in the third dimension because you know what comes with people that are at the level of consciousness where it's just the third dimension it is just victim abuser consciousness it is suffering consciousness it is their lower ego they did not develop past their lower ego so while physically we may look the same on the outside it is important that you learn how to discern spirit look behind the physical veil vet the person's character how do they think? What is your mind like? Can they regulate their emotions? Are they impulsive or are they disciplined? Are they working on themselves? Are they stuck in the third dimension? Does this individual apologize sincerely? So narcissism, pathological narcissism that is, is pathological. It is pattern, pattern behavior. So as you go through your healing journey, remember that while you were assigned the role of a scapegoat and or a lost child, you yourself are not a scapegoat or a lost child. You just are. You, however, just happened to be born into a narcissistic dysfunctional family system and you most likely inherited some of that dysfunctional behavior in the form of people pleasing or what you may hear being called codependence, which essentially is lacking boundaries. And that is simply because you did not learn them through your family system. However, as an adult, you do have the ability to unlearn and relearn appropriate behavior that can help us to traverse life. And this really is knowing that you have no business in the third dimension. Because while you may have been born into a dysfunctional family system, you do not have to continue this because you have the ability to end the cycle. You are the cycle breaker, the generational curse breaker, the generational cycle breaker. Generational curses really are a cycle of unconsciousness. It is the same behavior repeated over and over and over again. And if you're listening to this audio or watching this video, then you most likely are the generational cycle breaker in your family system. You are the awakened one, the chosen one, the light worker, the star seed, the indigo child, the highly sensitive person etc. So it takes time to shed this role, but it is absolutely possible. 
because you are deserving of love. You are deserving of kindness. You are deserving of compassion. So pour all of the love, kindness, and compassion back into yourself. And that is how you heal. Because if you're pouring into a highly narcissistic individual, you're pouring into a bucket that is filled with holes. Again, there's a hole that they have inside of them. And that is because they dissociated from their spirit. So you're pouring what there is really no one there to catch. You're pouring into a black hole. Black holes only consume light. And you will get wiped out if you continue to pour. Because again, there's nobody there to catch it. Because the captain is overboard. And that really is the message for today, kind people. Ensure that you are subscribed for more empowering content. Please continue to like these videos. Go ahead and share these videos with someone that you think may need them. She is the name. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next video.